Welcome back to Fantasy Football Today. I'm Jamie, that's Heath, that's Adam. We're taking a look at some players who've gotten off to some slow starts and should you be panicking on them in terms of trying to either get them off your fantasy roster or maybe trying to sell them or should you be maybe purchasing them and looking to acquire them cheap from another fantasy manager who could be frustrated with some of these players. And we'll start with a couple quarterbacks here. Heath, I'll start with you. Russell Wilson is off to a very slow start, the number 25 quarterback. He's averaging 13.9 Fantasy points per game. Not what we expected when we saw him go to Denver with this great receiving core that is missing some parts. Obviously, no Tim Patrick for the rest of the season. Is he going to turn things around starting in week four against the Raiders? Is he somebody that you'd be panicking about or purchasing? Well, I don't want to panic about anybody, but I don't want to start him, and I don't want to buy him. So I think that puts me in the panic side. It's the Broncos' defense or offense looks like a mess right now. He's not quite the same quarterback he was in the past. At the very least, we've lost that 20 to 30 yards rushing per game, although he did have six rushes for 17 yards in his most recent outing. I'm going to need to see a good game from Russell Wilson in this offense before he will go in my starting lineup again, and we might be a couple weeks away from me saying it's okay to drop him. Yeah, it might be that. I do think, though, this is a, this is a big week for because the Raiders defense not exactly great. I think he's going to have an opportunity for a big bounce back game here. I hope he runs a little bit more like we saw with the 17 rushing yards. So I would be lucky to purchase Russell Wilson. I think this is a good week to trust him in week number four. Uh, Adam, where are you at with Tom Brady? Because we know that it's been a frustrating start to the season for him. Missing guys. He's getting Mike Evans back from the suspension. We're hoping to see him get both Donovan Smith, the left tackle, and Julio Jones, the other receiver who's dealing with knee injury back this week as well. He's the number 27 quarterback at 13.6 points per game. Not a pretty start. Is this going to be a time that you are looking to purchase or panic on Tom Brady? 100% purchase. This is the most obvious one. We know why he's struggling. No Mike Evans, no Julio Jones, no Chris Godwin last week. He could have all three of them this week. Godwin seems like the biggest long shot there, but Evans will be back and Julio will be back. Donovan Smith is a big deal, and the offensive line is going to be a problem, and that's going to limit his upside. And they're more runner-oriented, and that'll limit his upside. But hey, how many good quarterbacks are there? Five right now? Tom Brady can certainly join that group. He won't be a super elite, but he is a purchase for sure. I think this is a good week for him, too. You know, getting a potential shootout with Patrick Mahomes. Hopefully everything holds up with the hurricane, and clearly we're, you know, hoping everybody's safe on the west coast of Florida. Uh, but in any event, you know, Tom Brady hopefully uh, looks like what the other three quarterbacks against the Chiefs have done. All three have thrown for at least two touchdowns. Brady has yet to throw for two touchdowns in a game, but getting Mike Evans back will certainly help. Travis Etienne, Heath is off to a slow start, the number 37 running back in PPR, averaging 9.1 points per game. We spent some time talking about how James Robinson is getting traded. Uh, he's been a big problem for Travis Etienne. Is now the time to look to acquire Travis Etienne, or would you be moving on from him? It would have to be dirt cheap, but if you can acquire him for a bench spot, if you can give somebody off your bench to put him on your bench, because that's where he belongs right now, then I'd be okay with it. He does have elite speed. He has elite upside. He's going to have some big games. Maybe you'll get lucky, and on one of the bye weeks when you need to start him, that will turn out to be one of his big games. I don't think you should expect him to be a regular starter unless something happens to James Robinson. One of the bigger busts so far based on his draft capital, and uh, I was buying into Travis Etienne to start a season because I did not expect James Robinson to look like this, so kudos to James Robinson, unfortunate for Travis Etienne. So not a bad move to try to sell him once he does have one of those big games. Adam, you're kind of getting easy ones here, but Alvin Kamara is number 54 running back at seven and a half PPR points per game. It's been frustrating so far for him, but clearly I'm going to guess you're going to say this is a guy you want to be purchasing. Well, actually, it's not that easy. Yes, I want to purchase him because I think the value is pretty low right now, but there's a lot going on here. First of all, the good thing, his schedule is looking incredibly easy. I'm going to tell you where his upcoming opponents rank amongst against running backs. 29th, 24th, 11th. That's Cincinnati just lost their best defensive tackle. 19th, 30th, 28th, and 25th. That's his next seven games. The problem I have with Kamara, just he doesn't seem like the same player, and this is not the same offense. He's better if Michael Thomas isn't on the field, but the targets are not going to be there. The catches are not going to be there. He's not the same guy, just not. I think we have to accept that about him. We have to accept that about Derrick Henry. They're both old enough. He's 27. Henry's, what, 28? I think they're just past their prime, quite honestly. So if you're hoping for vintage Camara, the offense isn't nearly as good as it was under Drew Brees. Uh, the offensive line probably isn't as good. He's just not the same player, so don't buy vintage Camara. But I think he's a, like a late second round type of player right now. Um, still a buy because his value is pretty low. But and I love the schedule. But he's got Ingram and Taysom Hill to contend with at the goal line. He's not what he used to be. The one thing that could save him to maybe get back to that level is if Andy Dalton does take over for Jameis Winston. We know Dennis Allen is starting to mull over, at least getting questions about a quarterback change. Jameis dealing with that back injury. Did not practice on Wednesday. Also did not practice with Michael Thomas and Jarvis Landry. Keep that in mind when you're looking at your lineups for week number four. Heath DK Metcalf is off to a slow start. Did score last week against the Falcons, but the number 42 receiver 
uh, in PPR, averaging 11.2 PPR points per game. Purchase or panic with Metcalf? I would be more likely to try to sell Metcalf off of last week's touchdown and 64 yards than I would to purchase him. I just think that there's not enough separation still between he and Tyler Lockett. And it's been that way for four years now. And with Geno Smith at quarterback, there's not going to be enough volume to sustain two good wide receivers on a regular basis. He's a number three boomer bust wide receiver. And hopefully he continues to score, because I think that's going to be the problem, but uh, or, or the benefit for him if he does have fantasy managers. Tyler Lockett's outplayed him, and that's where Geno Smith is going right now. So we'll see if that continues for Seattle in a good matchup for all the pass catchers and, and even Geno Smith against the Lions in week number four. Allen Robinson's been very, very tough to trust. Had the touchdown two weeks ago, but another bad game last week against the Cardinals. He's the number 69 wide receiver at 7.3 PPR points per game. Adam, do you see any scenario where Allen Robinson can start to get back to producing like we saw a few years ago, or is the guy that we saw last year and the start of this year the guy we're going to get rest of the way? There's no chance he's going to be like he was a few years ago with the Bears. Cooper Cup is just completely dominating targets, and Tyler Higby looks like he's the number two guy on that team. But Robinson does have, you know, we used to call Austin Safarian Jenkins almost Safarian Jenkins because he had all these almost touchdowns. Robinson is that guy now. He had one call back. He dropped one. That's in the last couple of weeks. So... Uh, he's still getting a lot of end zone targets, and that's exactly what you were hoping for. But this man is going to be so touchdown dependent. I am totally on the panic side of this. I'm not quite on the drop side of this because he is getting targeted in the end zone and might be able to stay relevant with touchdowns. But there's no way he's going to be a league winning player. So I am not purchasing Al Robinson. I am panicking. Yep, and, and similar to DK Metcalf, like you said, Heath, I would imagine he scores another touchdown, try and trade him, and hopefully the name and the recognition still carries some value. You can get something good in return.